welcome to Uplifting Impact. I am here with Fields Jackson Jr. And if you don't know this name already, you really should. He is currently the founder, the CEO, and the chief, I love this, chief cheerleader of Racing Toward Diversity magazine. When you look at this magazine, it's really a magazine that's focused on the idea of how we can showcase the best DEI work that's being done all over the world. And so he's created a space and a venue to bring together some of the, the greatest thinkers that we have in this work and, and in this space. And he's one of them. So it's really exciting to be able to have him on this call. The couple of things I just want to make sure I note so that you understand how special it is that we have him with us is that Mr. Uh, I keep wanting to call you Mr. Fields, Mr. Jackson. I get that all the time. I, I don't, sure. I don't sell the cookies. I don't sell them. I'm not Mrs. <laughs> Fields. <right? laughs> so Mr. Mr. Jackson, um, a couple of things. He was recognized by diversity best practices as one of the top diversity thought leaders on Twitter. He was recognized as number 13 of the top 100 global influencers focusing on gender equality and diversity. And he has been listed as one of the most influential diversity and inclusion leaders of 2019. And add this to your list. He's also a guest on today's Uplifting Impact podcast. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for being with us, Fields. I'm honored. Absolutely. And great intro. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, when you have such great background, it's easy, it's easy to do. So I would really love for everybody in the audience to get a chance to just understand what the Racing Towards Diversity magazine is all about, why you started it, kind of how that came into existence and what like your main purpose is. Well, diversity, we start, uh, I tell everybody I've got two nine to fives. Um, I started this, uh, my 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We started Racing Toward Diversity about 12 years ago. Uh, it was a, a publication uh, to, on the diversity. Uh, and again, our whole, our whole thought process is that if you don't believe in diversity, it doesn't make you a bad person. Mm -hmm. If you do believe in diversity, again, how do we help you in your journey? So we're not trying to convert anybody. So if you don't believe in it, it's just like religion. You know, we're not going to cut your head off to make you a believer. right? But if you are, so how do we help you along that is either supplier diversity, recruiting. How do we help, you know, sort of help you along that journey? So I've done that. That was uh, the magazine. We stopped. We used to print the magazine uh, up until about six years ago. Uh, print is a brutal business. So we used to print the magazine. Uh, we would ship the magazine out. And my advertisers would always ask me, well, it feels, you know, uh, who's reading? Did they read the magazine? I said, well, I know they got the magazine. I don't know <laughs> if they read it. You know, I don't know if the dog read it. But, you know, so there was a yeah. constant tug about, OK, who's reading it? And uh, so we made a strategic decision about six years ago to go totally digital. Had we not done that, we probably not would not be in business. Um, but what we found is that. Um, there was a, uh, a number of folks. Hold on a second. Can you, can you pause? Sure. All right. So I want to make sure that we understand how the magazine got started, what led you, you know, in that direction. What's the main mission of the magazine? Well, thanks for that question. Um, we, uh, I tell everyone I got two nine to fives. I've got a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm the CEO, Chief Cheerleader for Racing Toy Diversity Magazine. It's an online publication. We've been around about 12 years. And we focus on the business case for diversity. Our whole, our whole being is that if you don't believe in diversity, it doesn't make you a bad person, right? If you do believe in diversity, then how can we help you along that journey, right? If that's recruiting, if it's supplier diversity, how can we make you better? Uh, it's a, uh, right now, it's a digital magazine. Uh, about uh, six years ago, we made a strategic decision to stop printing. Uh, print is a brutal business. Yes, uh, it is. It's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we would ship magazines out to uh, to customers and our, our advertisers would always ask, well, Fields, are they reading the magazine? Now, I could prove you got the magazine, but I couldn't prove that you were reading it. So, well, I know he got the magazine. I don't know if his, his dog could be reading. I don't know. So <laughs> we were constantly fighting that. So when we switched to digital, uh, an am amazing thing happened. Uh, we had content coming from all over the world. But the amazing thing that happened was now you started to see the likes, the shares. And so we can now prove to advertisers, yes, we had strong enough content 
that people are reading and sharing and liking the magazine. So now we put out a, a it's a daily newspaper. Uh, it's actually free. You go to racingtoydiversity.com okay. uh, and you can, uh, it'll, a, a subscription will pop up. You put your email address in and you can get our daily newspaper and we print it every day. That so that's, exactly. that's the magazine. Uh, been doing that. Uh, and again, part of what we've, we hope to, to bring to people are those folks that, that believe in diversity. How can we make your job, what you're doing better? How can we bring the best practices from all around the world to now get you that, that roadmap as to what other people are doing to make themselves better? Right. Oh, that's awesome. That's so, that's so great. So that's one of the, the, the spaces. What's the other one? The other one, my other nine to five, my <laughs> 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Yes. I'm also the executive director of the HBCU Business Dean's Roundtable. Um, right. I've been working. I'm an adjunct professor. I teach uh, at Shaw University. I'm an adjunct professor at Chicago State. And I guest lecture at a lot of the HBCUs. Okay. I came to work with the HBCUs about, about, about four years ago uh, when I was working with the companies I'm working with now that were having a tough time finding diverse talent. And so I would be working on either social media projects or doing ads. And so it was during a conversation where they were looking for a hundred interns. One of my major companies looking for a hundred interns and they were having a tough time. And I said, well, you know, well, well who do you look, you know, where, who are you talking to? And again, this is what <laughs> diversity is all about because Definitely. people that say they can't find anybody. I said, well, you know, my first question, who are you talking to? Right. right. What circle are you looking what at? What circle? And right? How is it? Because if you're talking to the same people, guess what? You're going to get the same answer. I mean, it's, it's just funny how that works, right? <laughs> so I said, uh, I, I kind of thought the job was an internship job. And I said, well, I kind of thought maybe it was like, um, you know, patent attorney or something crazy, but it was a sales and marketing job. And I said, you got to be, I, I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, they said, no. I said, well, I'll tell you what. You know, at that time, my son was a sophomore in, in college. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you only need 100, you only need 99 now because Austin's my <laughs> son, my youngest. I said, Austin's mama will pack a lunch and he'll be there tomorrow, right? Well, they laughed, but, I, you know, I'm dead serious. Right? So, <laughs> so, so I said, hey, you know what? I know 100 kids that are looking for these jobs. Right. That they're telling me they can't find the jobs, right? And the companies are telling me they can't find anybody. So I didn't see the dots connect, but I said, well, send them over. So I sent it off to a couple of deans and the next day they got over like 200 residents. That's awesome. So um, I still didn't think it was a big deal, but the company was like, how did you find these kids? And I'm like, well, how come you can't, you know? So I said, uh, you know, you got any more jobs? You know, so they <laughs> I was I was real popular in the neighborhood. It's like Mr. Jackson's sure. got, he's got jobs, right? So sure. they send some more jobs over. So I start sending jobs out, and the one thing led to another. We're we're sending jobs out to a lot of the colleges that never get these opportunities. Right. Um, some of the smaller HBCUs, not the high, not the bigger ones, but the smaller ones that never got that. I was getting these opportunities from great companies in front of them, and the great companies were now starting to see they stopped saying they couldn't find talent. Now, if you didn't want the talent, and that's what diversity, if you don't want to do, you know, we find out real quick if, if you're just checking boxes. That's right. This is not the place to come. Right. Um, you know, Mr. Jackson's not the guy to, to send them to, because guess what? If, you, if you're playing, he'll have a bus full of kids out there the next day. Right? <laughs> and I'm going to make sure you tell each one of them no. So if you're playing, you know, you check the box. Okay. But if you're not. Let's get you the, some quality talent from places you probably never heard of. But it actually opens up that conversation where now people start to see, well, diversity is important. And that's the reason why I need to talk to other people. That doesn't mean I got to like them or go out on a date or, you know what, I need to expand my, my discussion. Right. Because guess what? Other people have ideas. Other people have, have resources. Other people have networks, Right that now expand what I'm doing for doing, especially if I'm trying to solve a problem, we're looking for opportunities. So that's, that's too, what happened. Is, is that it's achievable. I think one of the challenges that we often hear is not only like, I don't know where to go, but it just seems like too lofty of a goal. I could never get a hundred, you know, interns in a, in a 24 hour period. Clearly they've never met you, Mr. Jackson, but at the same time, right. How do we create that, that, um, 
I don't know, how do, how do, how do you see, or what have some of your writers talked about in getting people past those like non-realities, right? These things that people think are, are obstacles or challenges that they just can't surpass. And then you come in and sort of like, no, nope, all we have to do is turn this one little switch on and, and here we go. We've got this amazing opportunity. How do you make that? How do you help people make that shift or organization? Well, it, it's, it's not really a shift. It, it really comes down to, do you believe this or not? Hmm. Um, you know, if you don't believe it, there's, there's nothing I can do. You know yep. what I'm saying? And, and I tell people it's like religion. Um, you know, if, if you're a believer, right. Well, you really can't lie to me, but if you're a believer, Hey, I, I believe. So how do we, how do we further, if you're not a believer, then, you know, it's sort of, you know, what's the conversion, you know, do I, do I cut your head off? You know, there's people that get so caught up in the way they are doing things that to make you a believer, I got to cut your head off. Well, that's a low conversion rate. That's really low, right? Yeah, that's not going to bring anybody in. It's not going to bring anybody in, especially the guy standing next to me. He goes, well, yeah, I believe until I get away from you, right? So right. so how do you get people? So if you don't believe, it's a really tough thing, right? Yeah. But if you believe, and it doesn't have to be like you're rah-rah. Right. It becomes, okay, uh, do I want to get, if I believe in this, do, do I want to get better? Yeah. Simple question. So I have a question. I have a question for you. And this is one, I know that, you know, because you're pushing out all this great content and have connections to all of these amazing thought leaders, one of the things is that you're ahead of the trends. Like you can see them as they're coming down and as people, as they're developing in real time. One of the questions I keep getting asked, and I don't, I don't have the answer for it. I have some thoughts about it, but don't have the answer for it is, do you think that this moment is going to pass? Because we are in this moment right now where I think a lot of companies have a, a, an awakening, right? Like they've they've had some reconciling they've had to do internally and externally because of the things that transpired over the course of the summer and still are transpiring. Do you think, and I think a lot of DEI leaders are quietly whispering like, this is going to pass. We've been here before. And they're nervous about it. What do you think? Do you think that this moment is going to pass or do you think that the tone really is different? No, I think it's George Floyd to me changed everything. Um, you got to see how another group in society lives and have have lived for hundreds of years. Right. So I've talked to CEOs that said, you know, this was this was unbelievably bland. I said, well, uh, this has been happening in my community for years. I'm like, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean? It's like this has been going on for four hundred years. You just we just happened to catch this one on video. That's the only the only difference. It was that there was eight minutes where this this cop decided he was going to kill this guy, even though he's looking at this video. So you got to see it real time, because had that not been on video, it would have been he was resisting whatever, whatever the policeman said. He's resisting arrest or he'd said this or whatever. And that would just have been another statistic where another you know black guy died. But you got to see it. Right. So the difference to me is. Again, it comes down to, you know, do you believe this or not? I think it, it's been, a, there's been a lot of talk and I, the folks that believed in diversity pre-Floyd up their game. They said, hey, you know what? We're not doing enough. The folks that still didn't believe, they don't believe. They don't, and again, you hear, I'll say, you know, they said, well, you know, uh, I'm so sick of Black Lives. I said, well, forget about Black Lives Matter. I said, you know, what you saw with George Floyd, was it right or was it wrong? Well, you know, Antifa, I said, no, no, to stop that. Was it right or was it wrong? So it's a basic question. And, that, and believe me, there's folks I talk to, and I still talk to them, that cannot, there's always something else. Mm. They, and so the people that now, that, that's that change, they go, that was wrong. Right. Okay. And they'll say, well, Fields, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a black guy. I said, of course you're not a black guy. You know, you're the CEO of a company. Um, and you're not a black guy. Don't pretend to be a black guy. Right. Don't tell the black people in your company how many black friends you got because they hate that. Don't do that. Right? But you have to say to your employees who are looking to you, silence is not good at this point. So silence. Right. Right. Means you picked a side. Well, I didn't pick a side. Well, you didn't say anything. Right? So even if you don't want to get into politics, that was wrong. Because guess what? All of your uh, your brown and, and black employees are wondering, they're, they're going home and their, their spouse or their significant other is saying, what did your boss say? What's going on in your company? Right. Well, they didn't say anything. Well, I'm going to default. 
if you didn't say anything, I'm going to default to one side or the other. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So even if, even if you don't believe that was wrong, say it. At least I know where you stand. So I see this as that, that point where I'm seeing the folks that were, were on that diversity path. Mm-hmm. They're getting busier. They're getting more calls. Uh, so, again, now the CEO is now bringing them in going, you know what? This is I need to pay more attention. You know, you've been you know, you've been you've been knocking on my door for a while. And I and I, I really wasn't listening to you. So how do we make this better? So I'm seeing those roles getting expanded. And what's happening is the companies that we've been working with, we're getting more. We're getting busier. Because now they're, they're saying, hey, you know what? I'm talking to the international division. I'm actually sitting in on the board calls now. So it just elevated, right? Right. The other ones where they didn't believe, it is going to pass. And, and probably the more frightening thing I hear is these grand pronouncements from these companies that they're given, like, I'm given $100 million to whatever, and there's no accountability. So, okay, how do, you know, that's that's a great statement and it made the news, right? <laughs> it's like- Yeah, you got just, your talking points now. You, you, you know, a hundred million dollars. I'm like, okay, so how do I know you didn't? How do I know you did? And then if you gave it to them, right? What, what were they going to do with that, right? Sure. So you, you're starting to see people that are are being more intentional and which is good. I'm starting to hear how, you know, we're going to measure these things. So if I make this pronouncement, how do you hold me accountable? How do you, how, you know, so the, the, the movement with diversity is being held accountable, right? It's not an excuse. I can't find anybody. That's an excuse. Sure. I've heard CEOs say, I can't find, you know, I can't find women on my board. And I said, really? You know, that came out of your mouth, right? The half the planet's women. So, I mean, what's, what's your problem? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, what's, so when you say that, you know what I'm saying? So if you can't, then maybe you're the problem. So if you can't, maybe we need to get somebody in there who can. You see what I'm saying? So if, if we now start to hold people accountable, I see that whole discussion starting to move. So to me, it's, it's, it's pretty apparent whether you believe it or not, even though you've got all this stuff and, and a lot of people are winning all these awards. And I'm like, you winning this award? How did you? How did you win this award? It's like, you know, but you start to see the, the folks that are out there and it's all lip service versus right. the folks that really aren't looking for the recognition. But yeah. you, you sort of see, you know, the, the, the waves in the pond that they've created by their by what they're doing. So yeah. I know it's a kind of a long answer to your question, oh, but it, it, you see the people that are intentional and you see the people that this is just, hey, you know, this too will pass kind of thing. Right. And, you know, cause I, the reason why I ask you is because it's not just diversity, equity, and inclusion leaders who are whispering about this, but I hear this, you know, amongst senior leaders who are saying, how much energy and effort and money and resources should we really put into this? Because is this just a fad? And I think that that's really uh, problematic because it kind of comes back to your idea of like, you believe or you don't believe. And are you doing this because you're just trying to get the news cycle, get, get the right, you know, Correct. vibe on your social, get the, Correct. or are you doing this because this fundamentally hits the value? of your organization and what you believe in. And I do, I agree uh, with you about the fact that time is going to really create a pretty clear understanding of the people who are serious about this and the people who were not serious about this. And And, and you see that with talent. Yeah. As a senior leader, if you find out that, you know, this is a place that's not, has no, none of my values, you're going to leave. Yeah. And they're calling us, they're calling us and they're telling us, you know what? My company didn't say anything. My company is not really valuing this. I don't know how I can stay here. I am looking. And there you go. And, and that's, and the thing is, it comes down to talent. And right? what, what color is talent? What color is a, what color is a great idea? What color is, is brilliance? It's, it's, it comes in all shapes, sizes. And so again, yep. if, if I'm sitting here blocking, you know, creative people who, who eventually is going to lose, right? right. So it's about the game too, right? It is about not just I'm responding in the moment and I'm being, uh, you know, I'm being reactive. It's to being to the place where I think an organization is really looking proactively Correct. at what you're doing, right? So that you are able to position yourself to really take advantage of all the wonderful things that diversity, equity, and inclusion inspire. Correct. 
So I, I totally agree. Well, here is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that the people who are listening uh, to you talk are excited about getting more of this information and being connected to all of the many thought leaders that you bring on a daily basis to your publication. So I'm just wondering, can you share with us again where the website is? And if they want to get a hold of you in particular and want to be one of the 5 million gazillion people who follow you on social media, could you also tell us how, how they connect in that way? Yeah, you go to racing, our, our racing toward with no S, T O W A R D, diversity. Uh, dot com. That's our website. Um, we. I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter. I'm also on uh, Facebook. But probably the best way to connect with me is through uh, our, our daily newspaper. Uh, one of the nice things with the daily newspaper, with uh, uh, building my brand and building my network, is I have, um, I, I guess I have um, opinion leaders that supply content to the, uh, to the newspaper on a daily basis. And these are folks from all over the world. So uh, some of them I agree with, some of them I don't. Uh, some of them you would say, well, why is that? So again, I, I try to get opinions, even though I don't agree, that doesn't mean I have to be disagreeable. That's the only thing I sort of block was when, when people get in on both, and on both sides, on both sides get crazy. Just, just trust me, right? <laughs> but when you, when you get into the hate speech that you're gonna do something, that's when you get blocked. But if you've got a strong opinion, you know, I may not agree, but then I'm going to come back and tell you why, you know, I think otherwise. Sure. That's why diversity, that's why, and I think that's where the best ideas come out, right? Right. Uh, I think when companies are getting into different areas or different markets, um, I, I tell people, it's like, you know, if you've got a great company, you're selling beer and you want to sell beer to the, the Mexicans, it would behoove you to have someone from Mexico <laughs> in the room, you know, and it, it, you'd be surprised how many places they, they're selling products to women and you walk into the room and there's no women. I was like, okay. Did anybody sort of do a check and say, you know, what's wrong with this about, picture, right? Yeah, we don't think about, you know, the power of having representation, um, particularly as we are thinking about different marketplaces. So it is important for us to be thinking about Who's showing up? How do we take in diverse ideas? How do we take in ideas that don't necessarily match our own? How do we make sure that we're creating space for different voices to really play out? And I'm just so glad that you have added your voice to this conversation and that you are out there creating a platform for thought leaders to come together around this space. So I just want to say thank you so much for, for, for being here and spending some time uh, with the listeners of Uplifting Impact. And I want to say to all of you who are out there listening, make sure that you go and check out the magazine and also connect uh, with Mr. Jackson, because what you want to do is in order to really encourage your own thinking and really push your own thinking, you want to be able to position yourself to be able to get information in from a variety of different sources. So add this one uh, to your list. In addition to Uplifting Impact, we hope that you would share this podcast in that light with uh, all of your friends. Make sure that you bring people uh, to the table with you so that we can really think about these ideas together. Because the more we can bring people together around diversity, equity, and inclusion, the more power we will have to make really positive, lasting change, change that doesn't require a tragedy to get it started. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here with us. And we can't wait to see you on the next episode.